Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about how to add a digital border or a frame to your photograph in Luminar AI. It's a really fun technique to add a little something special to a photo, especially if you're going to be sharing it on the web. It just adds another dimension and is a lot of fun to create. Let me go ahead and show my screen and we're going to get started. I want to say hello to Pat. Welcome. Glad you're watching today. And to everyone else who's here, make sure you keep an eye on that chat. And I just added a link there for the assets we're going to be using today. It contains a link to some free borders and textures that you definitely want to grab. They're also down in the description of this video. So in case you miss it in the chat, make sure you go down to that description and you can grab that download there. These were created by our team here at Skylum and they're a lot of fun to work with. And that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So up on the screen, I have a really cool image from Amsterdam, snowy day. I did very, very little to edit this image. Let me show you the before. There we go, there's the before. And there's my after. And all I wanted to do was give a quick contrast pop to the image and then add this digital frame so it looks like we're looking out of a frosted window. Hey, JGmail28, glad you're here. Hello, Russell, hello, Ahmet. So glad you guys joined us today. All right, so I'm gonna click on this image go to adjustments and revert to original. This is gonna take away all of those edits and I'll walk you through every step that I've done. First, we'll go to templates and we're gonna apply one of my very favorite templates. Now you can always find this under, oops, scrolling really fast there today, uh, scenery and fast fix. And you'll see that I have a little heart here marked so to find it quickly and easily, I can always go straight here to my favorites and to fast fix. I use this template so much because it adds a really nice quick pop of detail and contrast and I really don't feel like it goes overboard in any way. So just that one click, there's our before and our after. Now I'm ready to go over and add my digital frame. To do that I'm going to go to edit, let that load up there, and into local masking. Up at the top I'm going to click on the add button and choose texture. Let that load. And now we'll go to load texture and this is where we're going to navigate on our hard drive to wherever we keep all of our digital resources. I highly recommend that you keep, you designate a place on your hard drive where you keep all of your digital assets, all of your skies, your textures, borders, LUTs, anything like that that you want to kind of load up after the fact to improve or enhance a photo. So I am in here in my folder. Let me go ahead and just show you really quick. Go to, um, let's do this as columns. And that way you can see what I've got going here. So I'm on my, on my hard drive here that I have all of my pictures. And I have a folder here called Sky Texture LUT. Inside of this, I have borders and textures, LUTs, objects, which I can use with AI Augmented Sky, and some skies. Um, here in our borders and textures, we have several that I've downloaded over the years. Right now we're using that paper texture kit. And if you want to download this, it's in the chat as well as in the description for this video. So make sure you grab that created by some of the people here at our Skylum team, really cool stuff. Inside this folder, I have some JPEGs, which you can see there's quite a few here. And then we also have these paper PNGs. And what's special about these is that they have a transparency in that when you load it into Luminar, you can actually see through it. So that's what I'm using today. I'm gonna go take a look at this. I'm gonna switch this here back to our icon view so we can see what our options are. And I'm gonna choose this edges to which is a white border. Click on that and say open. Give that a moment to load up. There we go, almost. Take a look over here at the chat. All right, if you have any questions, make sure you pop it into the chat. All right, so our border has loaded and you'll see that it's faintly showing here on the edges. That's because our opacity is at 50%. I'm gonna go ahead and move that all the way up to 100. And because this is a PNG file with transparency, we can see through that texture and we still get everything here in the middle of our image. Now you can see that it's not sized quite right. We need to fix that. I'm gonna to go to place texture. And once that loads up there, I'm gonna change my zoom here to 25%. And now I can more easily see where those boundaries are. Pull that in so it fits my image. Once I've done that, I can hit return on my keyboard or you can click on place texture again and then go back to the zoom, fit to screen and now we have our border on there. To go ahead and make this a little bit more our own, we can always adjust that opacity a little bit. I like to pull it down just a little because in, that way we can see a little bit of detail through the edges. And that makes it feel like we're looking through a frosted window. So it's a snowy day in Amsterdam 
and we're looking through a very frosted window, very cold day, but we're inside all snugly and warm. And that gives us kind of a really neat, unique view here. Now you do notice that there's some grain that's been added here in the top, and that is part of this texture that we just added. I don't mind it in the rest of the image, but I do kind of mind it here in the sky. So I wanna get rid of that. To do that, I'm gonna to go to erase. I'm gonna bring my opacity down to about 50%, make my brush quite large, I'm using the bracket key on my keyboard, and then I'm just going to erase that effect from this sky area here. And I'm using a low opacity brush because I don't wanna to erase too much here at the very top, and I want it to blend somewhat seamlessly. I can go over it again if it feel like it needs to be a little bit heavier, and that just adds a little bit more erasing to it, and now that nicely seamless, seamlessly blends into our background. So that's it for this image. It's a really, really quick and simple edit. I encourage you to go to that link that's in the description or in the chat, download these textures, have some fun with them. There's some great stuff there. Um, let me take a look here at the chat. Uh, Jerry wants to know what happens if you use a JPEG texture. That is a fantastic question. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna go ahead for now and turn this texture off so we can't see it. And let's add another one using one of the JPEGs. I'll go to texture, give that a moment. And then we'll go to load texture. And instead of being in our PNG folder, I'm gonna go up to the paper texture kit and I'm gonna choose those JPEGs and let's take a look at what we have here. Now we do have a couple of borders here. Let's go to edges, edges two. And I'm gonna click open on that and we'll let that load. Give it just a moment there. Let's see here. Pat say, uh, Russ says, Pat, check the, the show more under the video. Exactly, yeah, that's where you're gonna find that link in that description, but let me grab it again and put it into the chat in case some of you logged in a little late and have missed it. There we go. All right, so now our border is loaded up and right now you can still see partially through it. But here's the thing with the JPEG. If I take that opacity and move it all the way up to 100, we lose all of that detail in the middle. So first things first, let's go ahead and resize this so it fits the image. I'm gonna click on place texture and then go up to my zoom, bring that down to 25% and grab this top line and drag this down so it shrinks that to where it fits this particular image. All right, I'll hit return on my keyboard and then go back to my zoom and fit to screen. So now we have this well-sized border but we can't see our image through it. With the JPEG, there's no transparency, so what we need to do is go into our advanced settings, into these blend modes, and we can go down the list here, darken, does a great job, multiply, that gives us even a little bit more of the texture, and you can go down these lines and see which one works best for your subject. Now, different colors, different textures are going to respond differently. In this instance, I think darken or multiply, let's go with multiply, gives us the best result. And in this case, that even brings in some of that texture detail there around the top. It brings in that paper texture that we couldn't see before. So if I go back to normal, you can see that there's a really nice texture here. And with that multiply blend mode, we're getting that texture, but we also have our photo shining through. So that's another way to do it and make use of those JPEG textures. I hope that answers your question, Jerry. All right, and Pat, did you get that? Um, let me know if you got the link. I, I shared it again. And also make sure you check down in the description. You might need to click on see more. And then it's down there in the description of the video. So let's take a look here and see if there's any other questions in the chat. If you have any other questions or thoughts, suggestions, make sure you pop those in there. I'm happy to take that into consideration. All right, so now we have our two different versions. I'd love to know from you if you like the dark version better or if you like that original light version. I'm partial personally to the light version. The dark one looks pretty cool too. The thing I like about the white version is like I said, it feels like we're looking outside of that frosted window. Whereas it's a little bit darker and different if we're looking at this dark one. And this is kind of cool. I have both of them layered together. So I can even take that opacity and blend these a little bit too. So a lot of fun options you can do, blending multiple textures together, getting different effects. I encourage you to download those paper textures, have some fun with them. Uh, make sure you show us what you're creating, whether that's in insiders.skylum.com or you're over in our Skylum Photography Facebook group. I'd love to see the work that you're creating, so make sure you keep sharing those pieces. And if you're using a technique that you learned in Coffee Break, make sure you tag me or Vanelli. We're always uh, keeping an eye on those, so and always love to hear from you. 
With that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.